just and again you've had gone through this experience recently what about just being there in other words being there to talk to should you say well how long do you have or are you going to make it or is that a subject that's taboo because I think all of us all of us have no idea how to talk to someone like that or do you say nothing at all and pretend the situation doesn't exist and you're just having coffee with them and having a good time again I think best thing to do is to ask uh, my wife belongs to a women's club and when they when she'd go to these meetings how's Chris how you doing how you feel and then how are you really you know and finally she just said you know what I don't want to talk about it cancer does not define who I am and so she told them but if you if you're not sure how somebody wants to be treated or whether they want to talk about it or not ask them you know I really would like to know what's going on with you but if you don't want to talk about it that's fine or simply just being there in silent support and just letting them know that you're there for them if they're needed or if you're needed exactly because you uh, you your initial response on the telephone when someone tells you and this would be a friend more than a family would be oh you know I'm so sorry then you hang up and then you're like what more can I do and then you're thinking well if I call all the time then I'll be a pest if I call not at all so you're right I like the the ass concept but what about the immediate family let's say this hits a um, you know a wife who has children how do the children react what and I mean this is their parent this it's is somebody as, they've relied on it's just as difficult on the children it is uh, as it is on the the parents um, both the person who has cancer and the spouse or the uh, the significant other do they go into denial Dave could probably answer that well I, I, I don't have children so I don't uh, I haven't had personal experience with this I know uh, one of the big problems is that the children just don't depending on how old they are really young children just don't understand the seriousness of it or even that that mommy's sick so uh, they need to be uh, educated that you have to explain it to them and I would say don't hide it from them open communication is critically important between everybody in the family and you you all have to feel that it's okay to express however you feel and to deal with it in your own way you need to make sure that everyone has a safe place to land or a soft place to land so that they're not going to be ridiculed for feeling a certain way or they're not going to be told don't be ridiculous that's not going to happen because nobody really knows what's going to happen exactly. and so opening the lines of communication is so important whether it's just a man and a wife or it's a, a whole family and how about just being positive as a family in other words yeah. acting like you know we can still do all the things we did and and not make it be a condition of how this person feels all the time I have a wonderful family. Um, her name is Stacy, and she had breast cancer, has breast cancer, and she has two little girls. And she lost her hair, and she phoned me, and she was just devastated. And she said, "I would just love to feel better. Please, can you make me a cap?" And I said, "I would love to make you a cap." Um, and I called her back to find out what colors that she wanted, and she was her voice was just downtrodden when she said hello, and I could see I could hear her little children in the background, and she just said hello, and I said hi, this is Christine from Knots of Love, you know I want to find out what colors of cats. She goes oh hello, how are you? It's great to hear from you, and then as soon as I sent this when I was talking to her, as soon as her voice. Um, became happy her kids in the background started to play and I could just hear them in the background and she subsequently sent me a picture of herself with a cap on with her two children with a cap on and actually the pictures on our website and it's it's just a great thing to see. Well you just gave me the chills because yeah, it, it, what you just said was how that energy in the mother's yes, voice exactly. the change exactly. and positiveness in the mother's voice helps the family just changed the way the kids saw the world right. at that moment and they were and, just in their house and that is something even for a cancer patient to remember because that positive you know talk even if they may not feel positive inside to their children could help the family uh, survive better through I'd like to point out that it's not just the cancer patient that needs to project happiness or enthusiasm or positive attitude but the caregiver if it's the husband in this in this scenario if the husband can do that because a lot of times the patient just doesn't feel well enough to project that kind of a positive thing but the caregiver can usually do that 
but can he get tired of it? I mean, in other words, it is. It can be a long, you know, it can be six months of chemo and radiation, and then six months to find out if the cancer has resurfaced, then six more months, and then and the ups and downs, and the caregiver, if it is the male, taking the children to and from school, and I, I mean, the you know, doesn't that impact the, the spouses? The spouse and the significant or the significant other sometimes gets forgotten about. Yeah, very often. I mean. There is, a, there is a phenomenon known, there's actually a term for it, it's called compassion fatigue. And um, the caregiver can just get tired of being compassionate and feeling like that. And, and the best thing for them to do, or her, is to spend some time away from it. Just take a vacation from it. No, yeah, and it doesn't have to from be it. long. I'm not saying. A yeah. long time. Just go to lunch <laughs> with some friends or have dinner with some friends or just do something for yourself. Because you know what they say on the airlines. Put on your own oxygen mask before helping others with theirs. Oh, and that's because that. if, they, if you pass out, you're not going to be any help to anyone. So take a break, go and have some time to yourself, go to the movies with some friends, do something. Reinvigorate Reinvigor <clears throat> yourself. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. It makes a world of difference. Well, you know, we, I want to kind of talk a little bit about knots of love because we talked about the self esteem issue. And one of the things that I think again, people go through is, you know, my looks right away. In other, in other words, you, you know that you're diagnosed with cancer and then all of a sudden it's, you know, my looks, am I going to lose my hair? What's going to happen to me physically? Yeah. And I know that knots of love, as you mentioned earlier, creates caps, beautiful caps in all different colors. I, I have an example of one I'm holding and I think you have one uh, there. There's a few on the table that we have and they come in all shapes and sizes and colors for men and women men I, I and would women, correct. feel uh, and um, this is just such a great kind of gift idea or it's Thank something you. that you can you can do to make someone feel better how have you seen this help the people how do they react when they get one? Oh my gosh well I actually have a quote that I'd like to read if I may um, this is from a woman and she emailed me and she says what touches me most is the people who I will never even know who cared enough to make the time to make something that makes me feel better because my head is warm and I look cute I need to look cute right now it's good for my heart oh. Which is just Beautiful. incredible. And then just yeah. one more real quick one. Um, being, being diagnosed with ovarian cancer four months ago was one of the toughest things I've ever had to go through. But when you get a bag of the cutest, warmest, made with love hats passed around the chemo room, what a joy. So, so it's just, it's so, just. And so people make these from all over the place. Correct. And, and kind of donate their time. And their yarn. And, and their, their yarn. money. Sure. And it's just people that know how to knit. They, sure, they knit just or do this. Knit or crochet or loom. Yeah, they and just do it and they can do it on their own. And when we started the charity, I had no idea that our organization would equally help the people who make the caps as well as the people who receive them, the cancer patients. And oh, that's just sure. been a huge blessing, a, just a huge blessing. Have you ever seen a family all get the same caps? So it's like, we're going to be the cap family. <laughs> I mean, because that's an idea, you know, with that's the kids. A, that's, and a, that's, a, that's a great idea. You know, great because idea. it's a great positive idea. thing where everybody, yeah. I've heard and I have heard heard of, of children actually having their heads buzzed because their friend sure. had right. cancer. Sure. So just, just an idea, That's again, a fabulous have idea. the cap family. We may just idea. have to coordinate <laughs> that somehow. Even if we're matching caps, because you know That's how families right. like to dress alike, sure. that would be great. That's a great idea. We may have to incorporate that. Check our website in a couple <laughs> will. weeks. It yeah. might be there. <laughs> and how about the kids when they see their parent, or let's use a child to parent example, uh, get a cap? in the mail, does, does it kind of cheer up the I've family? I've seen the tears of joy when people are handed these caps. Um, when I walk into a doctor's office, um, an oncologist's office, and they see me walking in with the bag of caps, I mean, their, their eyes just light up and their faces just smile and they just beam and they just know. Or when I walk into a hospital and all of the little um, infusion cubbies are around and you see the people and they're hooked up with, the, with their IVs and whatnot. And they, they look and they put their head out to see what kind of caps are out there now. It's just, it's just an incredible, incredible thing. Well, a question. So, you know, you, you start your chemotherapy and, and does the hair loss happen immediately? Uh, 14 days after, uh, in, in our case, my wife's case, uh, and I'm sure the different chemo regimens are different, but 14 days after her first treatment, her hair started to fall out. And when it did, they said, to get it all cut really short, like to about a quarter of an inch, and let the little hairs fall out naturally instead of the long ones because of the color.